Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to make a helicopter in Autodesk Fusion 360. So once again, thank you everyone who's been supporting this channel. A like, comment and subscribe is amazing. We're very close to reaching 10,000 views just for this um, aircraft and helicopter series. So please do continue the support and as always, if you'd like to bump up the support, you can subscribe to my Patreon, where you get access to a lot more resources for as little as £1 a month. But more on that later, let's dive straight into Fusion 360. Great, so we left off in the last video um, with this main part of the fuselage complete. And we had done, um, we had split the fuselage into two different parts. So one was where the cabin is, so that's where the people would sit, and it snows, and the top is where the rotor is with its corresponding nose. So just a bit of housekeeping before we continue. So under your bodies folder, obviously we've got your main fuselage and the nose of the main fuselage. And I'm also going to rename this to um, uh, rotor fairing. And I'm just going to name this um, rotor nose. Okay. And um, the other thing I'm going to do now is just right click on um, the main folder, new component, and I'm going to call this component main fuselage. Okay, um, so I'm going to put all of these four inside my main fuselage um, component. Great, so let's go back and activate our main, um, main file as always. So what I want to do before we continue is just make a few edits to the top section of um, this rotor section because what you can see if you zoom in a bit closely at least from my file was um, is that you can see these sort of gaps in the middle and those don't look very nice so obviously for the purposes of this tutorial i'm going to show you sort of like an easy fix um, that you can do this with but obviously if you're doing this for more professional purposes i recommend um, trying to figure out a way where this suits your needs Okay, so I'm going to um, right click on this edit form in the timeline where I made this main part of the rotor fairing and I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to go to the right view and I'm as you can see over here, it's basically showing you this gap between the top and the bottom fuselage. So I'm going to just double click on this ring and also on this ring, right click and edit form. I'm just going to scale this up a little bit and drag this down. And we're going to repeat the process for this one. So edit form and just scale it up a little bit and drag it down a little bit. Just so there's a bit of overlap and that overlap is fine. So as you can see, it fixed out a hole over there. And as always, you can continue the same process for the back section over here if you want to. I'm okay with it. Again, because when you um, remove the lines, so if you make it just shaded, you can't really tell the difference. But obviously, if you're doing this for more professional purposes, do make sure that you fix things like this in hand. Okay, so shade over visible edges back. And now let's go ahead and focus on the tail. Okay, so to work on the tail, we're gonna be using a similar way as to what we did in the wing section of our aircraft series. And that is to use a sweep with a path and a guide rail. So first of all, what I want to make sure is that these two bodies end at the same position. And the way I can ensure that is by creating a a vertical cutting plane. So why do I want to do that? So if I zoom in, at least in my file, if I zoom in, you can see that the bottom fuselage uh, ends a little bit after, uh, after the one on the top. So we don't want that to be there. So what I can do is I'm going to create a new offset plane and you can click on any one of these for now. And what I'm going to do is go back by a little amount, maybe by two centimeters in my case. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press OK. Now, this plane is vertical, and this is exactly what we want. So just in case when you were creating the fuselage, your, your cross-section planes were not vertical, this is going to fix that problem for now, um, at least for um, diving straight into the tail section. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to split body, and the two bodies that I want to select are the, this one and this one, and the splitting tool I want to select is the new plane that we just created. Okay, and you can see what it's going to do now is it's just going to like slice that bit off. 
and press OK. So now if you go to your main fuselage under your bodies, you'll see that the last two bodies that are created are the two bodies that were just sliced. I'm going to right click on these bodies and click on remove because we don't need them anymore. All we really wanted here was to ensure that when I turn my construction plane off was to ensure that these two um, surfaces are vertical. Okay, and you'll see why this is quite useful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sketch uh, on any one of these planes. It doesn't matter anymore because they're vertical and they're in the same plane. So these two are now in coplanar, as we call it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press P on my keyboard to project. And what I want to project is a specified entity. And what I want to project is this one and also this one. So the two sections that we've created at the back and just press OK. OK, and OK, so it seems like it didn't like the top section. So I'm just going to try to do that one again. OK, and there we go. OK, so that's our section. And that's the cross section that we're going to be using to uh, sweep. OK, now finish sketch. So obviously, when we sweep something, we want a, um, a path and also a guide rail in this case. So what I'm going to do is go to the right view and bring back my canvases and press create sketch on the right plane. Okay, and I'm going to just going to zoom in. And as always, you might have noticed by this point, every time we start something new, we want a reference geometry from before. So again, I'm just going to press P and I'm going to project um, with a body selection over here. I'm going to select that body and also this body. And I'm going to press OK. Now what this does is it gives me that anchor point over there and it also gives me this anchor point over here. Great. So first, let's focus on the top view. So sorry, the top section. So I'm going to go to create spline, control point spline. And I'm just going to click on that there, that one there, and also that one there. OK, and so that is our curved part complete. Now I can go ahead and draw a straight line from there all the way, maybe somewhere over here. OK, and then we're later on, we're going to go ahead and chop the piece off. OK, now one mistake that you might notice that I've made over here is that this bottom fuselage section is supposed to end over here rather than over here. So in this case, what you can do is go back in time and change the fuselage or you can just guide another rail or draw um, a shape that goes like this. And that way um, it wouldn't look as bad. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to finish sketch here right now and go back to when I first made this body. So that's this one over here. I'm going to right click and click on edit. And I'm actually going to fix this. So I'm going to take the last section over here, right click and edit form. And I'm just going to scale this down a little bit and drag this up. Okay, I think it needs a little bit more scaling. So go down. And there we go. So I think that looks much better. So now it now, what I'm expecting this to do, as soon as I click on finish form, it's going to go back in time and it's going to fix everything. So finish form, give it a few seconds to do its calculations, and there we have it. So we'll see now that this is ending up here rather than down there. And now when I sweep this, the sweep will be a lot cleaner. Okay, so let's go back to the rail section that we were creating. So that's this sketch over here. So I'm going to right click on this and click on edit sketch. And now we're going to draw the rail section for it. So create spline, control point spline. And obviously I want to start from here and maybe till there. And then everything else is a straight line. So I'm just going to click on the line tool, snap to that point and go all the way back here. Great. Now I'm going to click on finish sketch. And now if we revolve around, you can see that we have our cross section ready. We have one path ready and we have another path ready. So now let's go ahead and sweep this. So I'm going to go to create sweep. So we want to make sure that the type is path plus guide drill. The profile is going to be these sections over here. So in this case, I have three of them. The path I want to select is any one of these. And the guide drill I want to select is the other one. Okay, so we've got an error over here. And the error says that the path is not smooth. What this basically means is that when we created both of these paths, they are not tangentially connected. And what does that mean? That means the path is not smooth. So how do you fix this? Okay, so let's go ahead and edit the sketch here. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a tangency constraint over here. So that one over there is a tangent constraint. So just click on that and click on that line and that line. And you can see what it's done is it's added tangent constraint. So if you don't know what a tangent is, it's basically um, a straight line that's continuous over here. So when we created this sketch and then we want it to be basically straight from there, that's sort of like a tangent. I don't know how to explain it without using mathematical terms, but that's pretty much the idea. We want it to be continuous. Okay, so now you can see that when I applied the constraint, this line sort of shot up. We don't want that, so I'm just going to drag this down over here. And I'm also going to apply a tangent constraint to this and this one. So tangent to this and this. Okay. And again, we want to just make sure it goes up like this. And maybe you can drag this one down if you want to. Now, alternatively, we can choose to not add a tangent to the to the upper one. So I can leave it just like this. But watch what happens. So if I finish the sketch over here and I go to create sweep and the profile I select this time is this one, this one and this one. And the path I select is this and the guide rail I select is this one. We are going to expect an error. So let's see. And there we go. There's an error. And the reason is because it's saying the path is not smooth. So instead of choosing the upper one as a path and the bottom one as a guide rail, we can swap those around. Because when we enable the tangency in the bottom one, we know for a fact that that path is going to be smooth. So now I'm just going to click on that and click on that as the path. And the guide rail is going to be the top one and it should work. There we have it. Great. So once again, we want to make sure that we have the extent to full extents and also the path um, the operation should be new body instead of join. So I'm just going to click on OK over there. And there we have it. So now if I remove my canvas, that's the tail section right there. So let's have a look at the canvas from the top view as well. And you can see that um, it is following it to some extent, but it's not quite the same. So if you wanted to exactly follow uh, the path uh, even from the top view, what you can do is similar to the loft from the no section is add more guide rails to your sweep or your loft. And that way it will follow the blueprint exactly. Okay, great. So this is pretty much it for this tutorial. I know it was a short, sweet one and it's not as long as the other ones, but this is pretty much all you have to do for the tail. Uh, in the next video, we'll be focusing on uh, doing the empanot section. So that's going to be your horizontal and vertical ones. So if you look at from the front view, you've got this thing on the left and on the right. And if you look from the side view, we have something at the back. So if you've already followed my aircraft video series, you can try and do the empanot section yourself first before the next video comes out and see whether, the, and see whether you can do it yourself first. If not, you can always go ahead and wait for it. But I do recommend trying it yourself. I feel like the best way to learn things is to try it out yourself first, troubleshoot, find your own solutions, and if then, if that doesn't work, then get some guidance. And I'm always here to help out. Okay, great. Um, so once we've done with that, then we are going to focus on how to potentially create these rotor blades for the top section and also on the side profile and then do one video for the skids and then do one video for the detailed fuselage. And then if people want, I can also do one for libraries, similar to how I did for the aircraft series. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. If this helped you out, please do like, comment and subscribe. It really helps me out and allows me to allocate more time and resources to making these videos for you. A few of you have also asked me about my music. Um, I'm going to leave the link to that in the comments below or in the description below as well. Um, I am releasing a few more songs in the near future. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do check those out as well. Um, if you'd like to bump up the support, you can always subscribe to my Patreon from as little as one pound a month where you get access to more resources than what is available for free here on YouTube. And you also get a few discounts for one-to-one -one consultations where I can provide you with live feedback through Zoom sessions, um, edit your models, or even make them for you if that's what you really want. So thank you once again, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.